Hi everybody, this is Viz. Um, I'd like to welcome you to my new channel for movie line models and such. Um, today is my first official review ever. I've never done a review before, so please be easy on me. I've, um, I'm going to be reviewing a very, very interesting model by Nysen Models, um, sold by Monster Room on eBay. Uh, it is the Klingon D7 1350 scale. Um, it's a resin kit and it is very beautiful. I think uh, you will enjoy it and hopefully I could share my ideas also about what I think, how it should be made and any improvements that might be made would be useful too. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to thank a few people for their help today. Um, first of all, my friend uh, Gene Davis, uh, who um, runs a lot of Facebook pages on the Klingon Katinga, on um, the 1350 TOS, all building model, all about building models, all about um, all about people's passion for it and bringing it together. And he has been a great inspiration for me for actually building models and starting this as a hobby. Um, the other people I would like to thank is Chuck Brooks and Cameron Randall Lewis Jr. who runs um, the who runs the company Cameron Cameron's decals and such. That's it. And he, they both have their insights have been invaluable uh, for helping me understand and how this model comes together. Um, I would also like to thank Jay Bowden. Bo Jay Bowden is actually the person from Monster Room who actually sells the models and has actually been answering a lot of questions for me and has actually been invaluable in his help. Um, I happen to be unique that I actually have both versions, both the clear and opaque versions of the parts that's available from Monster Room. Um, and I think a review of this would be a good way to start off everything. Uh, I would also like to share my ideas about how I think the model should be built, uh, which version I like to build. Um, I'll be using different kits like the Katinga 1350 scale from Polar Lights to compare and also a one 1000 D7 kit from Polar Lights, which I would also like to show you for size comparison. Although the 1350 scale ships nowadays is becoming sort of a norm and very popular, um, it's still nice to be able to see how big they are. So let's face it, it's nothing like a big in scale model. But I hope you enjoy and I'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. Okay, everybody, I'm back. And I would firstly like to explain how and what version of the model I would like to get. Now, there are differences of opinion in this model as there is with almost everyone out there. Um, first of all, I like the version in this book. Um, it might not be exactly with this book, and as far as I'm concerned, if it looks cool and it's not too far out of canon, I'm fine with it. Um, the version, the book is Kling, the Klingon fleet. Um, it's called Star, it's by Star Trek Shipyards. And it's one of many books out there. Um, this one personally is released by Eagle Moss Hero Collector. And it's got some real lovely pictures in it. Uh, but let's go straight to the D7 class battle cruiser. Ah, what a beautiful ship. Um, first of all, why do I like this version? Um, one... If you look really closely over here, I do like the fact that it's got some panel lines on it. Now, the lighting is quite well established in there. And I like those grills. On the next page, Particularly this picture here. I like the way it's lit here and there and there. Okay. 
and if you go here to the next picture you can see the disruptor cannons coming from there and there and I would love to have that on my model I love that picture that's it exploding and that is by the K9 from the Trouble with Tribbles now when you go to the next page let's just see an outline now one thing that caught my eye here was this just there the redness there that looks awesome and there's a shuttle bay now I will discuss the shuttle bay a bit further later on when I come to the model Of course it does have all the others like the bird of prey and everything it's a very good book i don't know how accurate it is but you know we can spend all day arguing about things like that all week all month and you won't get anywhere at the end you build the ship like you want to and how you love it and the way you see it for instance i have been told just over there there's writing on it over there there's writing a little bit of writing over here there's a Klingon symbol there but I have been told that there has been no writing on the original D7 fine you know however it is in this book and when looking at I was looking at some stuff um, particularly this here now this is a blueprint that I downloaded from the um, from a website. Um, it's writing there. When looking at the others, over there, over there, the. So according to this, there, was, there is writing, but I've also heard that these blueprints were drawn up by a fan to how he saw these should be made. So it's controversial. But at the end, do you want the writing on or not? Uh, I think it's up to you, and I think I do like the writing. And I might go that way. Um, so... Yes, I also like the paint scheme on here. Although there's no raised panel lines, there's still sort of little panels on them. I do like that. But let's go on with the model. First of all, the bottom wing. Size. So what have we got size-wise? Um, when compared to a one is to one thousand model, this is the Polar Lights one. Yeah, it dwarfs it. Sorry, out of camera there. It dwarfs it. It's far bigger. The model is very smooth. With a few bumps here and there, but nothing major. otherwise a really good casting relatively I can see no bubbles on this thing nothing there nothing there or there the underside beautifully cast Very happy with it. The top side. Now that also beautifully cast. There is a bit of roughness just here and there, which oh, but that is the inside. Let's look at here. A bit of roughness just here just here which can be easily sanded away 
but otherwise, pretty good. The edges are a bit rough here. No bubbles that I can see. Um, this spot just broke off. I'll have to repair that later. Um, but otherwise, excellent. Now the nacelles. I've got two of them, of course. <laughs> um, beautifully classed. Bit rough over here. Otherwise, the detail is fantastic. Um, bit of over stuff here that needs to be removed. Now, the, basically, it's a good, good casting. Hardly any bubbles, except for the. That's the first bubbles I've seen on this entire kit and I have been through it. It's a bit of a seam that needs to be sanded down there. But otherwise, pretty good. The neck. Um, first of all, that's a bit of flash there. It'll have to be removed. It'll probably be just, most of it could just be pulled away. Yeah, that's fine. There is a metal rod that runs through it that has unfortunately become blocked, so I'll have to figure a way to actually clear that out. Probably just to drill out and clean out and push out. Uh, same there. It is a bit blocked on both sides. Uh, that's a bit tea, but otherwise, I mean, good casting. We'll have to just clear out some of that. Some of the flash on here. On the sides, the seams will need to be cleaned up nicely. Um, otherwise, pretty impressive. Casting is smooth, except for a little few bumps here and there, but nothing major. Nothing that a little light sanding can't take off. The end caps to the Nacelles. A few bubbles there, but that you won't see even. Beautifully cast. A little bit of flash there. A little bit that will have to be removed from inside there. There. A little bit to be removed. A little bit to be removed over here. Same here. There's a big stonking piece in there which needs to be removed. There also. There. But otherwise very well cast a few other things um, we have these nicely classed a little bit of seam which needs to be cleaned off um, beautifully crisp casting a little bit of seam over here but nice this year bit of seam work needs to be done otherwise nice crisp casting okay so this here also beautifully cast barely any bubbles in nothing you can see on the outside a bit of roughness here which needs to be sanded But I do want you to know, this is a garage kit. It's generally will come with a few problems, a few cleanups. It's a resin. It's not a styrene kit. And with it being bubble free, is very nice. This here, this part is, you won't see it. Doesn't matter if it has bubbles in, no. Doesn't matter if it is cast in bright pink, no. Um, it will be hidden in this spot. I 
like that and we'll cover that nicely that will be covered and you won't see it so it doesn't matter too much for this part um, a few other parts this is the bit that goes into the torpedo at the front it's the detail parts for that of course there is two each one two one two and you just have to remove it very carefully and place it in there and I will be going through that when I go through the torpedo the next lot I will be the next lot is theirs there's two parts it's also really beautifully cast nice detail this fits at the bottom of the nacelles just there of course it'll probably be to be finessed to really fit really well But shouldn't give too much problems. I think after that little bit is gone there, they should fit pretty well. Just like that. So let's look at the parts that you can get, which is available in both. clear and opaque okay first of all is it bubble free now this is something they did say in the when they say on eBay virtually bubble free yeah very very good and if you look at it like that I mean I can't see a bubble in there that's really good now if you look inside very carefully you'll see a little ring that is to be able to take that part there this part there fits in that ring at the bottom if you look at the bottom there you'll see a little recess that recess takes the square bit just over here fits right into there okay this I'll put one side now, but otherwise clear casting, smooth, really nice. Uh, we'll have to put a hole through there to be able to pass through any light. Um, it should fit something like that. Of course, there's a lot of style, a lot of flash in there which needs to be removed to make it fit properly. But I'm not complaining because so far it's an absolutely beautiful kit. I love it. Very happy with that part. And here we go. This is the bit that's also available in both. So. On top there is the shuttle bay, the impulse deck. Now, with the, with the Katinga, you can actually get a shuttle bay to fit in there. Now, I have been actually checking if the Katinga shuttle bay would fit on there. Uh, this is a set done by Well Noon, uh, available on... Oops. This is a shuttle bay made by Well Noon, available on Shapeways, and unfortunately as you can see on the side it just does not fit so if you are going to do a shuttle bay uh, it's going to take some doing because there's a big lot of um, reason right there to put a shuttle bay in there would be very difficult and even if you want to scratch build one it is possible but if you feel the, s the difference between here and there, that's enormous. That's in a lot of reason to remove if you want to put a shuttle bay in. However, this part here, because you are dealing with a clear part over here, you could light that according to the 
this. Just over there, that's lit. And I think it would look really nice if it was. Um, so yes, I probably would want to. Um, why? Well, not too far from Canon and will look cool. Um, a few things that we have here, this, yeah. This here will eventually go with that. So let's look at these parts over here. That's in clear. That's in clear. Nice crisp stuff. Um, this actually goes into this part. No, wrong one. There we go, like that. Okay, and then this should go on something like that and that look should look quite cool when it's done the lows should line up It should be something like this. My mistake. And so I've seen no evidence of this needing to be lit up. But I will be looking into that. This here will definitely need to be lit. And this I would definitely like to light. The last bit available in is of course the Cobra head. Also beautifully cast. Bubble free that I could find. A few little notches just here and there but nothing major. Would sand down well. And it look amazing when it's painted up. The phaser cannons right there. Now, what are my thoughts? Well, first of all, this, let's see how they go together. First of all, this would have to go onto here, like that. That goes onto it, something like that. Okay, that fits well enough. Um, we would have lights across here. Which will have to be lit up now. How easy or difficult would it be to do that? Well, you could put a strip in here and basically just open the lights up there and scratch it open, and that should do the trick. Um, because if you light this, the entire thing will light. Put in phasers in there. Now, you would need to be able to get a light in there. I don't believe it can be done easily without a proper fiber optic in there or a um or perhaps a um an led put in through here put through there and then a tr you basically just feed the lighting through here uh it would be a lot of work though but it's possible i suppose um so i would personally like to light those even though nothing shows in the book i think it would look nice uh, the other thing that I would like to light are these, just around here. Now, in the book that I'm showing you, just there. That should come from there. Now, it 
seems like just over here there should be a light which can shine out and form the disruptor cannons. However, putting it in here will take something. Um, you probably have to cut out a trough right across here, put an LED or something in there, make it come straight across. If you dig a trench in here, there, and the trench should have to go all the way up there so that it can come into this area here, through here. And be fed off into that area there. So, would it have been better if this was in two phases? I'm not so sure. Um, it's a lot of work to put a LED just there. Um, but would it have been for a garage kit to be able to take this in two pieces and put it together and be seaming all this around? Would that be more work? I'm not so sure, I'm not that experienced a modeler. Um, so, yes, I mean, personally, I would like to put something there to show off the disruptor weapons. Um, otherwise, I mean, every model comes with its challenges. And if there are any challenges, we'd probably make them up. Find some. Now, what have I not gone through? First of all, the I'd like to show you some of the size comparisons with the Katinga. That is our Katinga model. And it appears D7 is slightly bigger. Amazing. When you look at the neck, the neck, and that at the end, also slightly bigger. Comparison between these two parts. Very, very, very different. So, final thoughts. To Jay Bowden, superb work. Um, I think. Yes, like any other model, there are improvements that can be made, but so far I've had a look at a few resin models. I have the, um, I have the 1350 um, Reliant by John Day, and that's also a pretty good model, and I'll review that later. Um, I've also had a look at Don Shoko's um, 1 is to 1000 um, Enterprise D. I've also got the uh, fantastic plastic 1 is to 350 uh, SS Botany Bay. Uh, all good models. Value for money. Um, I think I've paid. I've paid up to 4,000, 400 pounds for a model like this. Um, and yes, expensive, yes. But garage kits are generally more. Um, the uniqueness of it is this one. It's really well cast. And the customer service is fantastic. Um, I have to say... It didn't take long for Jay to read by to me. I've almost got him on speed dial now. <laughs> He's so fantastic. Um, and I think it will make a perfect companion to a 1 is to 350 TOS or the 1 is to 350 Katinga. Um, it's just beautiful. 
And would I recommend it? Yes. Would I buy it again? Oh, hell yes. I'd buy more than one if I had the money. Um, and should I think round two should actually consider doing their own version of it? My goodness, yes, no doubt. Um, what I would like to see is a 1350 Kronos. That would be a beauty. Especially if you got all three of these models next to each other. This one, the Katinga and the Kronos. But otherwise, first of all, what would I rate the model? Uh, for a resin model. Now, I don't think resin models should be rated the same way that um, that a styrene model should be. But let's go through a few more things before I rate it. Okay. First of all, I will say this. This here is paint masks. Very nice paint masks too. It basically covers two things, the writing and the Klingon symbols. So if you want to, instead of using the decal sheet, you can, however, use the paint masks. This is the decal sheet. It has the writing on it over the Klingon symbols. Okay. I also have a decal sheet from Cameron Randall Lewis and that's much more bigger um, and this is where things go controversial because it depends on whether Cameron's does not have the um, writing on it um, and he's is a bit bigger um, however does not mean each one is wrong. It depends on what version you want to make and why you see the model. So I think both of them would be fine. What I think would be invaluable is to actually copy these down from online. Um, they're available free. But it also is really good in showing you where the windows must go. Because you don't have a template for it. So, what are my criticisms? One, I think if the nacelles could be designed in a way so that we could light that area there, we'll be able to pass through lighting areas here through there. That would be fantastic. Although I don't know what the ideal way to do that would be. Um... Another improvement I would probably suggest is on here. In case somebody actually wants to put a shuttle bay, if they actually make this part a bit thinner, so that it goes down, and that can be easier lit. And in case someone wants to scratch bolt a, a shuttle bay, they can put it in there then. But otherwise it will be very, very difficult. That's the two criticisms I have. Third is, I do wish they had an instruction booklet. Although, I mean, a or instruction page or some kind of instructions, but that's a minor gripe because really, you just have to look at pictures to be able to see how this comes together. And it comes together really nicely and easily and all you've got to do is just use a bit of logic. Um, so, the model itself, casting, I would say, I would give it about an 8 to 9. Um, fit, it's very difficult for me to charge the fit. The fit seems to be good. If you take this, place that into there, without that, there is a little bit of, flat, of work that has to be done to put that into place. Um, However, he's a little bit there, but that might be just that there's more flash that needs to be removed. So otherwise, that's not too bad. 
so fit I would give it a good 8 out of 10 um, it's not perfect but it's much better than a lot of the models out there um, value for money for a resin kit oh yeah very very good um, one of the best um, also customer service oh that's a 10 out of 10 you can't get better than what they offer um, they really get the stuff out fast and they are really good at it and things that are quickly they quickly answer questions they don't keep you waiting for six to eight weeks to answer questions suddenly pop up really he's lightning fast in answering anything uh, would i recommend it yes would i buy it again oh hell yeah um but um to anybody who wants to buy this kit i would highly recommend it and it is definitely on my to-do list um i not going to be building this kit right now. Um, I've got a lot on my plate. I'm doing a full Katinga set, three models onto a um, onto a very large background, and I'm doing three models for the Deep Space Nine set. Uh, so that I will talk about more later. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it, and hope you find it entertaining. Um, if anything, I would like it to be informative and if there's any questions that I can answer, I will try, but you can, um, I do want to tell you I am not Chuck Brooks, I am not Cameron Randall Lewis Senior, I am not, um, Jay, I'm not, um, Boyd Compton or Simon Merckx. I am very new at this and I will answer any questions that you want, but if I can't, I will try to find out the answers. Thank you very much and thank you for watching. Hi, sorry, um, just back again for a quick epilogue. For those of you that want to know the cost of the model, it is available on eBay from Monster Room. Um, the cost is $250 plus £44.78 postage in the USA. Um, if you want to buy it from any other country, you will um, probably have to pay more for postage. And this does not include the the clear parts. Um, the clear parts you would have to pay extra for and would have to inform them that you want it when you actually order it and they would give you a cost for it. Um, otherwise, um, good luck with everything. Thank you.